Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Health Innovation Awards 2020, organized by the Health Innovation Research and Practice Subcommittee of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. This year's competition was held under the theme, Health Innovation for Tomorrow, to highlight the innovations done during COVID time. So to commence the award ceremony, I cordially invite Professor M.C. Veerasinghe, Professor in Community Medicine, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. So good evening to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here today. And uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association actually looking at uh, for future, started this committee of health innovation research and practice this year. And uh, it was a time when uh, actually the COVID-19 epidemic was also having a problem. And uh, the health innovation was one of the key things that we wanted at this stage to see how we could contribute towards the combat of this illness. So the subcommittee, which was uh, established in the SLMA did a very good job of uh, actually <laughs> conducting this contest on five categories uh, across the country. And we today are pleased to say that we have got good contestant coming in with their health innovations and, uh, and the selection process is already over. And today we are giving a platform for them to showcase their, their innovations, those who have, se have been selected as the best. And uh, this is a session for us to see what we can offer for the future and as a platform for them to actually offer uh, their contribution to the country. So I'm uh, glad to be here and, uh, and I would like to thank all in the Health Innovation Research and Practice Committee the hard work of bringing this event a success and today at the SLMA Annual Congress. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, I call upon Dr. Sankar Randini Kumara, Council Member of Sri Lanka Medical Association and Member of Health Innovation Research and Practice Subcommittee to deliver the preamble for the Health Innovation Awards 2020. Good evening, everybody distinguished guests, invitees, council members of the SLMA, my teachers, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to have you all in this event, the first ever SLMA Health Innovation Awards. This was a novel idea presented at a committee meeting of the SLMA Health Innovation Research and Practice Subcommittee which has become a reality today. The task assigned to me by my colleagues today is to give a brief introduction on the mechanism we adopted in the process of selecting winners. Our objective was to encourage the innovators who stepped forward in the times of COVID-19. There were five categories, namely, schools, institutions, general public, universities and tertiary education institutions, and medical doctors. Participants were expected to send an abstract as well as a short video clip explaining their innovations for assessment purposes. The submissions were assessed independently by a panel of judges who are experts in the relevant areas. Following, our, following areas were considered in awarding marks during the assessment. 
in the schools category, originality, usefulness, and independent effort. In the institution category, novelty, environmental impact, safety, potential of export market, and sustainability. In other categories, that is uh, university, general public, and the institution, uh, sorry, and the medical doctors categories, the areas considered were novelty, potential of commercialization, usefulness, and contribution to human benefits, and scientific principles. Marks were allocated to the above areas, and the decisions of awarding gold, silver, and bronze medals or merit awards was taken by the panel of judges according to the marks they have obtained. Certain categories were not awarded with the full range of awards or medals due to the same reason, that is, not exceeding expected minimum marks. So that's all regarding the process we adopted. So ladies and gentlemen, while concluding this introduction, I would like to congratulate all inventors who made this to the final round. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you, sir. Next, we will move on to the presentation of the abstracts and the award ceremony. So we'll first begin with the school category. We have had many entries in this category, but we will have one particular presentation today, and that is the presentation of the automated water tap and door controlling system presented and authored by uh, P. Nelita Fernando. So I'd like to call him on stage. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nelda Priyavansha. I'm going to explain my automated water tap and door controlling system. Motivation. COVID-19 has now become a serious problem in the world. The virus spreads quickly and easily among humans. The person may wear a face mask when going to public places, but their hands may not be clean. Even if he or she they cleans their hands till the virus can transfer to them from the environment. Coronavirus can stay alive for hours, two days on contaminated surface depending on environmental conditions such as humidity and temperature. <coughs> By washing your hands properly before entering to any place, we can prevent the spread of the virus. Ministry of Health recommends post Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Ministry of Health recommend, uh, sorry, but many Sri Lankans in particular do not follow the procedure or forget it. To overcome this situation, I intend to produce a do door that opens automatically with this automatic hand wash to remind people to wash their hands. Unicuness of product and application. In this project, I develop a basic model for hand washing with an automatic door control system. I have made a contactless water tap so that you do not have to touch the surface of the tap and it is automatic. This will greatly reduce water loss too. It can prevent people who enter without washing their hands and security persons won't have to risk their safety. I designed this to be powered by two batteries even when there is no power. This prototype could also be used as an automatic alcohol-based hand sanitizer dispenser or sprayer to disintegrate the hands. Components and design. I have used Arduino board, ultrasonic sensor, infrared sensor and other components displayed in my presentation. 
This is the main circuit diagram of my invention. Further improvements. I am going to add an automatic soap or sanitizer dispenser and contactless temperature reading sensor to detect people with fever and prevent them from entering into the place. And I am going to apply patent for my invention. Thank you very much. Thank you for that impressive presentation. It is now time to deliver the awards for the school category. So I cordially invite Dr. Kalyani Guruge, Consultant Pediatrician and Public Relations Officer of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. The winner is B. Nelitha Fernando for the automated water tap and door controlling system. Next up will be the university category. The presentation will be on Sustainable Biomedical Waste Management System, authored by A.P. Dunuvila, S.A. Karyavasam, and Y. Fernando. And we invite A.P. Dunuvila to present it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anurusha Piyadma Dunvila, a second year mechatronics engineering student at University of Mordua. Um, so from here onwards, I would like to start my presentation. Uh, my presentation title is Sustainable Biomedical Waste Management System. So um, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, 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 point out uh, what are the uh, main problems which are raised in these days. Uh, we all know that COVID-19 has been an uh, immense threat to the world. Uh, so each person con uh, consumes at least one personal protective equipment um, due to uh, the high infection rate of the virus. So thousands of uh, medical waste are generated uh, due to this increment of the usage. So um, some of them are properly disposed, some of them are not properly disposed. Um, in case of former, uh, PPE waste are treated uh, uh, using incineration or uh, landfill. In case of latter, uh, PPE waste are um, uh, left untreated at the places such as um, roads, rivers, etc. So, um, uh, so um, uh, uh, these two uh, uh, disposal methods. Uh, leads to air and water contamination uh, and um, soil pollution, as well as uh, spreading the virus via improper disposal ways. Uh, the other problem is that um, uh, as the uh, infection rate increases, um, so as the infection rate uh, increases, uh, um, what we call a shortage of supply uh, can occur due to the high um, uh, high um, demand of PPE. So um, it will uh, cause crisis in healthcare uh, systems as well. 
so if you can uh, use some uh, personal protective equipment more than one time, it will um, uh, surely resolve, resolve the uh, bow problem. So um, as you can see here, uh, we have introduced uh, two systems um, um, for this issue. So we, in here we use um, two concepts under the uh, three R's you know, principles of waste management system, uh, namely reuse and recycling. Uh, so um, this, uh, the one system is a special type of cabinet, uh, which is used for recycling PPE, and the other system is a special type of ca uh, cabinet, and uh, it also used for uh, reusing PPE. Uh, so now I'll explain about the uh, recycling system. This is the design of our novel recycling system. Uh, the system, this system is applicable for gloves, N95 masks, uh, protective gowns, and um, uh, protective gowns and uh, uh, boots, as, uh, etc. So we can uh, put one PP, uh, one type of PPE at a time, and disinfect them uh, using a disinfected liquid, and then all the PPE uh, will be directed through a UV emission tunnel. Uh, further disinfection will occur there. At the end of the tunnel, a uh, shredded machine is placed, so all the waste are converted into fine particles. So then I move on to the uh, next system. Uh, this is the uh, novel, uh, this is the design uh, of our novel reusing system. Um, this system is applica applicable for uh, uh, protective gowns and uh, boots, etc. So at the prototype level, uh, around five protective gowns can be hanged using a special type of hangers, uh, using the nozzle arrays which are located at the hangers and the uh, uh, walls around the cabinet. Uh, disinfected liquid is sprayed, so both inner part and the outer part of the clothes can be washed in that way. Uh, after that, uh, using a uh, specific nozzle, uh, nozzle array, uh, hot air is sprayed, so uh, we can dry all the clothes. Uh, in here uh, also, we use uh, UV emission to uh, ensure proper disinfection. Um, so, um, so to conclude, uh, we have introduced uh, two separate systems, uh, which will uh, really beneficial to uh, 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 re really beneficial to uh, dec uh, decrease the environmental impact. And uh, our next, as our next step, we are uh, trying to build up the prototypes uh, using these two systems and uh, um, uh, try to um, estimate the uh, economic feasibility and environmental impact reduction potential. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next up in the university category is the invention titled Multifunctional ICU Bed for Sri Lankan Medical Sector, authored by M.P. Surya Gay, T.A.B. Prabhat, P.K.P. Kumara, S.A. Nanya Kara, Y.W.R. Amrasingha, H. Thamra, and M.A. M.M. Jayavardhana. I invite M.P. Surya Gay to present it. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank the All Island Medical Innovation Exhibition Committee, which is the Sri Lankan Medical Association, for giving us this valuable opportunity. And on behalf of my research team, as well as University of Morituer, I would like to present my innovation on a multifunctional ICU bed for the Sri Lankan healthcare sector. So to introduce and to tell about the motivation of our project, we have identified several problems in the Sri Lankan healthcare sector, and uh, we are trying to give solutions to two burning issues, regardless of the situation or the time, even in the COVID-19 or not. The first one is the patient handling platforms that we use. We use these kind of conventional wheelchairs, trolleys, and medical beds, which are not up to standard, and they lack comfort and transfer transferability. And all the high-end devices that you can see in this presentation slides 
are either imported or the, especially they are expensive and they are not that much adaptable to the Sri Lankan uh, hospital environment. The second problem that we identified was the patient monitoring systems that we use here in Sri Lanka. So they are pretty much outdated. And uh, if you are using these kind of multi-monitors and other devices, the need of, a, need of the physical presence of a doctor is essential. And even though we have uh, mo uh, monitoring systems such as Watson IoT uh, all around the world, they are expensive. And as a country, we cannot afford it. So this is the system or the patient monitoring platform that we have proposed. It has a separate mechanical system as well as a monitoring system. The mechanical system can be converted into three main modes of operation, which is a wheelchair, trolley, and a bed through an electromechanical control system. And we can convert it to five key clini clinical pos uh, positions smoothly. We have developed a human-machine interface to interact with the device. And we have developed an IoT system to record patient data in a separate patient profile, as well as to send them to a mobile application in order to enhance the remote monitoring capability. We are proud to say that we have several patentable design features, including novel linkage mechanisms, extendable chassis designs, as well as uh, bed extension designs. So we are currently in a process of uh, getting uh, patents for these features in terms of the mechanical design. So we were able to uh, build an actual prototype in the same scale. So these are the final parameters that we were able to test. So we developed this for a six foot two inch person with a 150 kilogram weight. And this is the uh, prototype that we have developed. And we are proud to say that we were able to manufacture this all by ourselves at University of Moritua without getting any other uh, help. So every part was manufactured by ourselves with the workshop staff at University of Moritua. And uh, when it comes to the real-time monitoring systems, this can, this can get uh, patient enrollments, can collect data, and uh, the data can be transferred within the mobile application and other IoT platforms. Uh, the pulse oximeter, blood pressure, and other ECG data can be collected. And uh, this will be, uh, these are the uh, photos of the uh, uh, Android application as well as the real-time data visualization that we have developed. So, to conclude, uh, this project, uh, the actual cost was around 0.6 million rupees. And uh, with the manufacturing cost, we expect it to be around 1 million or 1.2. And I think that it is a huge uh, cost benefit uh, with respect to the commercially available products. Thank you very much. Thank you. The following invention in the university category is titled Remote Monitoring System for Non-Critical COVID-19 Patients, invented by K. Pirindan, R. Mudungotua, R. Munasinghe, and S. Jayamana. And I call upon R. Munasinghe to present it. Thank you and good evening. Um, I would like to present this uh, remote monitoring system for COVID patients. Uh, it's a video, just uh, three minutes uh, in time. So can we play that, please? But I can't see it, uh, that's issue. So this is basically to keep uh, doctors and uh, nursing staff away from COVID patients and the patient uh, non-critical so that they can take their own measurements. It's a bedside small device every hour, two hourly, three hourly, four hourly as the doctor prescribes. Uh, the patient can use this system. You can see the pulse oximeter, the thermometer, and the uh, newly built uh, respiratory rate uh, monitoring system. This one, the patient can wear it uh, on his uh, face and it will take how many uh, beats a minute. And all the data goes to the cloud immediately and the doctor can see it and judge whether the patient is uh, getting better or getting worse. 
निरीक्षण उटिंग So if it is satisfied then this uh, red color will turn to green color. After that the patient should take the temperature reading. He has to keep that in uh, inside his armpit and then he has to press this button. So this red color blinking LED will indicate the device is taking the temperature reading. So then the respiration re- respiration rate. So the patient should wear this probe under his nose and while he exhale and inhale the device will uh, count his respiration rate so after he uh, he wear this uh, probe he has to press this button again for every exhale this uh, red color led will indicate that he is exhaling so he's my re So likewise it counts how many times we are exhaling uh, in a minute. So all this data will be uploaded to the cloud. So you can use this one not only for covid patients uh, post covid uh, for home care elderly uh, uh, care systems and also uh, to use uh, as a device uh, to discharge patients maybe early discharge patients from uh, hospitals. Thank you. Thank you. Still in the university category, the next invention is Cuban monitoring system for people in quarantine, authored by G. Ganeshwaran, G. Soiza, T. Sivaneswaran, A. Tenakon, R. Munasingha, V. L. Parma, and S. Jamana. And I invite R. Munasingha to present it. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, please play the video. Uh, our product is uh, developing a, a monitoring system for people who are in quarantine. Uh, in our product, basically, we have a receiver and uh, we have developed wristband for the person who are in quarantine. Uh, this is the uh, mobile app uh, we have developed. It is used to enter the data uh, about the person who are in quarantine. And uh, this is how we uh, enter the data. Using the app, uh, we, can, uh, we can see the state of that person. That means whether he is in house or uh, he is out of house. Uh, first, we need to do it. Uh, if Uh, if a uh, group of people is declared as to be quarantined, the PHI should come to place and he should place the receiver and the wristbands uh, should be given to the, those people. Then the PHI should enter all uh, data uh, to the mobile app. Then uh, he should uh, make the association between the wristband and the receiver. After everything is established properly, every five seconds, uh, wristband will send the data Uh, to the receiver, which means the present sta- status of that person. Then uh, receiver will send that accumulated data to the server and server decides whether the person is present or not. Then uh, after, if, if the person, uh, person is not, not presenting uh, at the quarantine center or the uh, in-house, uh, it will send an alert to the PHA person. Uh, our receiver is uh, mainly power, powered by the main power and uh, we have a uh, lithium-ion battery which uh, lasts for, for six hours. Uh, 
ेस Thank you. The final invention that will be presented in the university category is public addressing drone for COVID-19, invented by R. Munasinghe, C. K. Pirindan, and S. Jayamana. It will be presented by C. K. Pirindan. Yes, a video. So, good evening, everybody. Uh, I am uh, Brindan from University of Morotua. So, I have been in the uh, team of developing this public addressing drone. So, what is public addressing drone? This is an autonomous quadcopter drone with a 40 watt uh, megaphone, and it has mobile uh, voice connectivity and also a real time broadcasting, a live broadcasting. So, let uh, us see, uh, like, let's see a short demonstration video now. So the uh, specification of this drone is ha it has 30 minutes flight time and 2.2 kilogram in weight and it has fail safe operation modes, different modes and it is portable. So there are two ways to do this announcement. One is a record, pre-recorded uh, sound clip or else you can do a live uh, broadcast using your mobile phone. So we are using GSM from anywhere you can do this uh, announcement. <laughs> So you can plan a path and uh, through that path the drone will do the announcement and also you can feed a GPS location so it goes and it do the job and it will come back. So these are the prospective application and is this public addressing on emergency situations uh, like this pandemic situation. And also we can handle the crowd uh, in order to maintain this social distancing and also broadcasting dengue prevention awareness messages. And definitely in disaster situation, we can uh, announce it quick as possible to a certain group of people, uh, whatever the things we want to convey to them. So uh, the, and our team uh, is, this is our team and uh, Thank you for uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association. And I don't uh, want to miss this chance to thank my professor, uh, Rohan Monasinghe, because he's the pillar of all these projects. And thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you. To give away the awards for the university category, I invite Dr. Anula Vijay Sundara, consultant physician 
and immediate past president of Sri Lanka Medical Association. The Merit Award goes to Sustainable Biomedical Waste Management System. There is another Merit Award won by Multifunctional ICU Bed for Sri Lankan Healthcare Sector. The third place goes to COVID-19 patient monitoring system. The second place is won by quarantine monitoring system. The first place is awarded to Public Addressing Drone. Thank you, Madam. We are now moving on to the institutions category. And yet again, we had one particular presentation that stood out. That is the Atlas Automatic Medical Assistant, AMA, an automated ward round maker. So this, this uh, abstract was presented by uh, MDH Marabadda, ANK Basnaika, HM Amila Iranda, HDN Kumara, KVJL Vijay Kohan, GP Niroshana, LL Akmimana, NTPKK Nanayakara, KDGA Ratnayaka, AGKV Ataudetti, HPSMS Dharma Ratna, UWGT Jayaratna, and MASR Chula Ratna. So to present this uh, uh, presentation, I invite DH Marabadda. ලංකාවේදී <laughs> ඉතින් එතෙන්දි අපි මුලින්ම දැක්කේ කොවිඩ් කියන එක කොයි වගේද කියලාවත් දන්නේ නැහැ අපි. ඉතින් ඒ වෙලාවේදී අපිට ඕනේ වුණේ අපේ මෙඩිකල් ස්ටාෆ් එක සේෆ් තියා ගන්න. මොකද ඒ සිස්ටම් එක කලබ්ස් වුණොත් මොනවත් අපිට එතනින් එහාට කරන්න බැරි වෙනවා. ඉතින් ඒ හින්දා අපි බැලුවා අපිට මොනවද කරන්න පුළුවන් කියන එක. ඊට පස්සේ අපිට ඒ වෙලාවේදී අපි කල්පනා කරේ මෙඩිකල් ස්ටාෆ් එක ගොඩක් වෙලාවට පේෂන්ට් ගාවට යන්න වෙන්නේ පේෂන්ට් ඩයග්නෝස් කරන්න ඒ වගේම පේෂන්ට් එක මොන හරි කතා කරන්න ඕන වුණොත් ඒ වගේම මෙඩිසින් ඊට පස්සේ ෆුඩ්ස් ඒ කටේට සප්ලයි කරන්න. ඉතින් අපි හිතුවා මේකට චයිනා වලත් මේක ගොඩක් පාවිච්චි කරා. අපි මේකට අපි ගාව තිබ්බා අපි අපි අපේ කම්පැනියක ඇතුළෙම හදපු ඔටෝ ගයිඩඩ් වෙහිකල් සිස්ටම් එකක්. 
ඉතින් අපි ඉමිඩියට්ලි මේක කතා කරා මෙඩිකල් සෙක්ටර් එකත් එක්ක අපි ගාව දැනට තියෙන එක අපි යොදවන්නම් කියලා. ඉතින් පළවෙනියටම අපි මේක මේ හරහා හොඳ සේවයක් දෙන්න පුළුවන් කියලා බලලා අපි මේකෙදී ගොඩක් වෙලාවට අපි දැනට අපි පහක් මේකෙන් ඉම්ප්ලිමන්ට් කරා පේෂන්ලා පැයකදී පේෂන්ලා විස්සක් එක්ක කමියුනිකේට් කරන්න පුළුවන් හැකියාව මේකට තියෙනවා ඒ වගේම පි ඇත්තටම දන්නවා ගොඩක් අය කොවිඩ් එක්ක හිටපු අය PP cost එක තමයි ගොඩක් වැඩි වෙන්නේ මොකද PP එකක් අනිවාර්යෙන් ඕනේ ඇතුළට යනවා නම් ඉතින් දවසකට කී පාරක් යන්න වෙනවද කියන එක හිතුවොත් ෆුඩ් දෙන හැම වෙලාවක යන්න ඕනේ මෙඩිසින් ගෙනියන හැම වෙලාවක යන්න ඕනේ ඊට අමතරව කතා කරන්න පේෂන් ළඟට යන්න ඕන වුණොත් ඒත් PP එකක් ඕන වෙනවා ඉතින් මේ හරහා අපිට පුළුවන් වුණා මාසෙකට සාමාන්‍ය මිලියන එක වගේ කොස් සේවින් එකක් කරන්න මේකෙදී අපේ තිබ්බ මේන්ම ඇඩ්වාන්ටේජ් එක තමයි නැවිගේට් වෙන්නේ ඔටෝමැටිකලි ඒ කියන්නේ අපි බෙඩ් එකේ නම්බර් එක ටච් ස්ක්‍රීන් එකක් තියෙන මෙඩිකල් ස්ටාෆ් එක ඉන්න තියෙන තැන ටච් ස්ක්‍රීන් එකෙන් බෙඩ් එකේ නම්බර් එක දුන්නා නම් ඒ ජීවි එක දන්නවා කවුද සිලෙක්ට් කරපු පේෂන්ට් කියලා එයා එයාගේ පාත් එක ත්‍රූ මැග්නටික් ටේප් එක ඩිටෙක්ට් කරගෙන ඒ අදාළ බෙඩ් එක ගාවට යන්න පුළුවන් ඊට පස්සේ එතනදි පුළුවන් පේෂන්ට් එක වීඩියෝ කොන්ෆරන්සින් සිස්ටම් එකක් තියෙනවා එතකොට පේෂන්ට් එක ලයිව් කතා කරන්න පුළුවන් ඩොක්ටර්ට මේකෙදි ඇත්තටම ඩොක්ටර් එතනම ඉන්න ඕනිත් නැහැ ඩොක්ටර්ට මේ හොස්පිටල් එකෙන් අවුට් සයිඩ් වුණත් පේෂන්ට් එක කතා කරන්න පුළුවන් ඊට අමතරව ටෙම්පරේචර් මෙෂර්මන්ට්ස් ගන්න පුළුවන් දැන් සාමාන්‍යයෙන් ටෙම්පරේචර් එක මෙෂර් කරන්න වුණත් කවුරු හරි ඇතුළට යන්න ඕනේ ඉතින් මේකෙදි එහෙම නැහැ ෆේස් එක රෙකොග්නයිස් කරගෙන මේ ටෙම්පරේචර් එක මෙෂර් කරගෙන ඩේටාබේස් එක ස්ටෝර් කරනවා මෙතෙන්දී ඉමේජ් ප්‍රොසෙසින් අපි පාවිච්චි කරලා තියෙනවා ඒ කියන්නේ පේෂන්ගේ ඒ කියන්නේ නම අවශ්‍ය නැහැ එයා ෆේස් එකක් රෙකොග්නයිස් කරලා ඒ ඩේටා එක අදාළ ටයිම් එකත් එක්ක සේව් කරගන්නවා ඊට පස්සේ ඩේටා වෙනම ඩේටාබේස් එක සේව් කරනවා ඊට පස්සේ මේකෙදි තියෙනවා දැන් අපි ඒ ජීවි එකක් වුණහම මේක බැටරි පවර්ඩ් වෙන්නේ ඉතින් බැටරි පවර්ඩ් වුණොත් මේක චාර්ජ් කරන්න අවශ්‍ය වෙනවා ඉතින් චාර්ජ් කරන්න වුණත් කවුරු හරි ඇතුළට යනවා නම් තවත් පීපි එකක් හරි රිස්ක් එකක තමයි අපි ඉන්නේ ඉතින් ඒ හින්දා මේකේ අපි සෙල්ෆ් චාර්ජින් ඇඩප්ට් කරලා තියෙන්නේ එතකොට මෙයා අදාළ තැනකට කොහෙට හරි ආවලා නැවත හෝම් පොසිෂන් එකට ගෙනාපු ගමන් එයා වයර්ලස් චාර්ජින් වෙනවා කවුරුත් අවශ්‍ය නැහැ චාර්ජ් කරන්න ඉතින් මේක කියන්න සතුටුයි අපි හෝම් ආගම තමයි ඉස්සල්ලම ඉම්ප්ලිමන්ට් කරේ හෝම් ආගම වෝඩ් දෙකක අපි මේක පාවිච්චි කරා ඊට පස්සේ ඉරණවිල පාවිච්චි කරා දැනටත් ඉරණවිල පාවිච්චි වෙනවා කුරුණෑගල සස්පෙක්ටඩ් වෝඩ් එකක් තියෙනවා ඒකේ පාවිච්චි වෙනවා ඊට පස්සේ කාත්තංකුඩි ට්‍රීට්මන්ට් සෙන්ටර් එකේ පාවිච්චි වෙනවා ඉතින් මේක පළවෙනියටම අපි හෝම් ආගම ඉම්ප්ලිමන්ට් කරද්දී ගොඩක් ස්තුතිවන්ත වෙන්න ඕනේ එතන මෙඩිකල් ස්ටාෆ් එක අපිට ගොඩක් උදව් කරා ඉතින් අපිටත් ඇත්තටම ප්‍රැක්ටිකලි එක්ස්පීරියන්ස් එකක් ආවා හෝම් පීපි එකක් ඇඳගෙන ඉද්දි කියලා ඉතින් ඒක දැක්ක ගමන් අපිට කම්පැනි එකෙන් තව කීප් කීපයක් හදන්න ඩොනේෂන් හම්බුණා ඉතින් ඒකත් එක්ක පහක් අපි දැනට සේවය යොදවලා තියෙනවා ස්තුතියි Thank you very much for that presentation. I think all the doctors in the audience would agree that's a much needed innovation in a time like this. So to deliver the award, I invite Dr. Sumitra Tisera, Secretary of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. And the winner is the Atlas Automatic Medical Assistant and Automated Ward Round Maker. Thank you very much. We will now move on to the general public category. And to deliver the first presentation, I invite MV Disa Nayaka, the uh, the abstract that they present would be the automated guided vehicle for covid-19 hospital written by mb disa nayaka as tennakon mp ilangakon r patirana and s amarasinghe
good evening all uh, i'm madhuru disanayaka i'm an engineer from moroto university i work as a manager automation ms intimates private limited so it is my privilege privilege to present this type of innovation in front of all you like medical professionals and uh, inventors so covid 19 is a big challenge for all of you like medical professionals not only for medical professionals uh, but also for all the industries in the world so during the covid 19 lockdown period my uh, i have made two main targets one was how can i support my company to survive this situation how i can support medical staff with new technology and innovation so this is one of the result of that thoughts i'm going to present you today automated guided vehicle for covid-19 hospital so this picture was taken where we handed over the vehicle to the director general hospital polar naru during the presentation you can see how we implemented the vehicle to the positive wards so my team was myself amila tennakon manjuli langkon ruan patiran and dr sandhya amar singh moving to the next slide what is agv and principle of work in agv so agv automated guided vehicles were developed by the world to minimize manpower and increase the productivity and the accuracy and the reliability of the work in different kind of industry so these are the principles of my agv you can see my agv as well so it's going on a magnetic tape with the magnetic guided sensor and it has a differential wheel system it means it has two wheels to keep the vehicle on a track and it can detect obstacle either man or object on its own path and we can control agv by using any kind of a smart device and uh, you don't want to plug into the charger it comes to the charger and charges the battery automatically and the capacity is maximum capacity is 300 kilograms and maximum speed will be around 2 meter per second and special feature is there for covid-19 patient video conferencing capability uh, it means you can have communication between patient and uh, medical staff this is the vehicle you can see ip camera wireless charger and drive unit and obstacle detecting sensor and you can you can name the rack you can name the rack with uh, ward number or patient number whatever you want move into the benefit of this project minimize the exposure between health staff and patient and patient and patient so cost benefit it's obvious you can you can reduce the cost for pps and psychological impact so i think most of the positive patients uh, distress uh, for being isolated and treated by medical staff uh, by wearing uh, ppe so now they can enjoy the way of reaching and serving them uh, literally and individually and motivation is normal when we are using technology and the automation we have a motivation to use that uh, kind of uh, technology and innovation so minimize the distress so health staff they, it's very difficult to wear ppe for 20 30 minutes more than 20 30 minutes is very difficult i think i have same experience and uh, maximize the utilization of health staff so i think uh transportation of food medicine and uh, reports i think we can consider as non value added in operation so we can reduce uh, those kind of operations uh, by using this kind of technology so open for modification actually with the mind modification we can add some extra jobs on the agv uh, i mean uh, we can we can clean the floor by using agv and uh, moving to the my experience so this is valikan the positive ward so you can see the building and uh, this is our agv and we implemented agv to the positive side you can see red zone there there were two doctors supported us a lot to paste the magnetic tape and uh, we entered the agv to the positive ward i found a guy from positive side he is from italy and uh, he has some technical background he supported me to me a lot to paste magnetic tape and uh, manage the technical thing you can see young positive patients are there they supported me a lot so this is my team so moving to the next step of this agv 
So actually, we have done this. We have delivered 10 units to the Valley Khan, the positive word. A smart device is like a smart watch. So by using the smart device and AGV, you can capture clinical parameters such as uh, oxygen saturation, heart rate, temperature, and blood pressure. And you can capture data, and you can have some analysis on the, based on that data. So that's all about my presentation. So uh, it was an amazing experience for me to work with health staff during that pandemic period. And uh, uh, it's it's amazing experience for me to work with them and to see how they uh, commit their life a lot to during this pandemic period. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. The next innovation is titled Semi-Automated Telepresence Robot, written by S.C. Ranasinghe, T.M.A. Thennakon, K.G.R.L. De Silva, and C. Ratnapriya. It will be presented by T.M.A. Thennakon. Good evening to you all. So I am here on behalf of our team to present our presentation on the semi-automated telepresence robot. Uh, actually, we are a team of engineers working in industrial automations and developing robotic applications developed in Sri Lanka for the industries. So at the outbreak of the COVID-19 in Sri Lanka, we also came thought as a team, so we should do something to save our valuable assets in the medical, uh, medical sector. So that's why we also developed this kind of robotic application for the industry. So basically what this does is delivering drugs and food and basic needs for the patients who are in uh, isolation. And this also have the uh, two-way communication with the camera system so the patient and the doctors or the medical staff can interact with each other. And also the patient monitoring system is also there. And this robot is, we define this as a semi-automated robot because this can be uh, fully automated as well as manually controlled in order to uh, send to a desired place. And uh, the purpose of this robot is to reduce the contact of the patients and the medical staff during hazardous and contagious, contagious situations like in the COVID-19, uh, at the COVID-19 situation in some hospitals. So the significance of this product is the two-way communication. And also, uh, even a person with minimum knowledge can operate this one. And also, this reduces the contact of the patient and the medical staff. And uh, on the other hand, this is a robust design, actually. This is not a DYI project, because we have uh, developed industrial robots for like five, six years now. And uh, so this is a quite a robust design developed by about six of our engineers. And this is an economical solution too, in terms of the economics, because the robotic applications are high cost when it comes to practical implementation. And that's why we designed as an affordable device to the medical industry in Sri Lanka, so we can sustain this product for the future as well. On the other hand, when it comes to the features, this has the remote control and the auto-guided mode, both modes, and about 600 kilograms capacity. and. Uh, this is battery powers with about 12 hours in operation without any charging, and it also has auto charging feature as well. On the other hand, when it is uh, automated, it is uh, going in the automated mode. It has obstacle de detection where it will stop in case of an obstacle is there during uh, along the path, and it has a durable metal structure and it consumes very low power. So these are some of the features that we incorporate with this robot. And with the support of the Sri Lanka Inventors Commission, we already donated uh, devices to the uh, Valley Sarachess Hospital. And uh, we also value the uh, opportunity given by Sri Lanka Medical Association today and uh, the support extended towards us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Before moving on to the final presentation, we have a request to all the award winners. Please stay until the end of the event because the organizers are hoping to take a photograph with all of the award winners today. Thank you. So to move on to the final presentation, uh, it, it's under the it's under the, uh, the innovation is titled Alternative Respiratory Machine for Ventilation, written by Captain DGT Gunasingha, Brigadier MB Samarakon, KNC Fernando, AD Arya Kumara, HD Ranavaka, HG Vitanage, L Padmasiri, WRBSSK Bandara, MBL Priyanath, EMJK Karunaratna and WMR Veerasinghe. And to present the innovation, I cordially invite Captain ULGDT Gunasinghe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, Captain Gyan Gunasinghe, belong to Sri Lanka Army Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, uh, presently working as a biomedical engineer of Sri Lanka Army Hospital. Uh, alternative Respiratory Machine for Ventilation, ARME-1, designed by Sri Lanka Army Electrical and Mechanical Engineers with KNC Innovation Private Limited. So uh, let's move to the, uh, our final uh, product. Uh, this is the, our uh, final product. Then uh, let's move to the uh, small video clips of ARME1. Our team was trying to achieve the minimal acceptable performance and desirable desired features for ventilator to be used in this COVID-19 outbreak. Finally, the group successfully managed to develop its beyond the minimally required parameters listed by some international authorities. Our device was tested from Army Hospital Biomedical Department and Jardana Pura National Hospital biomedical department. The reading what we got from the ventilator analyzer proved that our device performance are up to the standards. Available modes of ARME 1, volume control, pressure control, pressure support, CME and SIME. Let's move to the available features. PEEP, range from 5 to 25 water centimeter, adjustable in increment of 1 water centimeter. Respiratory rate, respiratory rate 6 to 30 breath per minute. Uh, it can be adjustable in increment of 1 breath per minute. Tidal volume. It can be uh, adjusted uh, 200 milliliters to 900 milliliters. And also, uh, it can be increment uh, of 20 milliliters. IE ratio, 1 into 1 to 1 into 4. And airway pressure safe and safety. Peak inspiratory pressure is operated uh, adjustable up to 50 water centimeter. And mechanical fail safe well open uh, above 60 water centimeter. FIO2 range from 21% uh, to 100. And it can uh, be under operated uh, pressure in the range of 4 bar. In ARME 1, uh, it's, it display its respiratory rate, I ratio, PEEP, FIO2, ventilation modes, 
all the above parameters can be uh, adjusted easily on the touch screen and lockable to prevent accident, uh, accidental changes. Alarm systems, it generates an audible alarm at low high inspiratory pressure. Inspiratory and peep pressure not achieved. Patient circuit disconnection. We have taken following relevant standards and document as a guideline. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we raised our, uh, our product to the NMRA, uh, NMRA and now we are waiting to take NMRA, NMRA certificates. Uh, future we hope to uh, design and publicate our, uh, our product uh, and give to the rural area as well as the uh, Sri Lankan hospital. Uh, that is our future plans. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of the general public category. So to distribute the prizes, I cordially invite Professor Manoj Virasinghe, Vice President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. So we have the prizes of the general public category right here. Third place, alternative respiratory machine for ventilation. Second place, semi-automated telepresence robot. And the gold medal goes to the automated guided vehicle for COVID-19 hospital. Thank you, sir. The final category under which abstracts were submitted is medical doctors. An invention is titled Semi-Automated Mobile Chest Physiotherapy and Prolonged Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation Machine, which can be operated by a single person from a mobile application. Invented by TAOI Somaratna, KM Samarasinghe, HAD Chanaka, AAV Niroshan, SV Lian Valage, CM Madangavira, MM Jayavardhana, and EAST Ediri Singha. And I invite Somaratna, TAOI Somaratna, to present it. Good evening, all of you. I am Musan Somaratne, representative of the team Oshka KVD20. My team members are on the screen now. Uh, we request patent uh, for our innovation. Uh, this is a pay, uh, patent number. We focus to uh, build a semi automated chest physiotherapy and uh, CPR machine. Uh, why we plan to build uh, this type of machine? Uh, 
in the uh, COVID season, uh, we can't uh, touch the patient. Uh, therefore, uh, we need an uh, intermediate partner. We decided it uh, as a uh, machine, uh, semi-automated machine. We uh, already know uh, many of type vibration machine on around the world, uh, but percussion and uh, percussion machine are very rare. Uh, so uh, we decide to uh, build a percussion and uh, CPR uh, machine. This is our control system, uh, physiotherapist, mobile application, our machine, and patient. Physiotherapists uh, have a mobile uh, which uh, installed our mobile application, and it's an Android application. Uh, mobile will uh, directly contact with our uh, machine uh, through the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, physiotherapy can uh, visualize uh, the pa <coughs> patient uh, from the uh, ca our camera system, and uh, to uh, there's a token system uh, to communicate between uh, patient and the uh, physiotherapy or doctor. This is our, uh, this is our main part of the uh, machine. It's, uh, it's called as vi vibrator. Uh, we use a, a crank sl slider mechanism to uh, for convert uh, rotating uh, motion to reciprocating uh, motion. Uh, when we de design uh, the vibrator, we use uh, Perspex, uh, Perspex, SS, uh, brass, and uh, iron uh, to build uh, build this vibrator. Uh, nebulizing cup we use as a punching cup uh, because uh, nebulizing cups are very easy to find in the uh, hospitals. This is our uh, lifting jack system. Lifting jack system uh, designed for the uh, adjustable. Uh, just to height uh, in our machine uh, according to uh, hospital bed height. This uh, CNC and uh, driving, uh, driving mechanism. We use uh, NEMA 23 stubborn motor and belt and pulley driving mechanism to uh, move our vibrator. Uh, <coughs> we use uh, 10 and 12 diameter linear uh, linear railing profiles and bearings to uh, make a CNC bed. We use uh, C plus and uh, Arduino for the uh, programming, complete programming uh, part. Uh, MIT app inventor and uh, inventor, <coughs> sorry, inventor used to uh, develop our, our uh, mobile application. Uh, nowadays, uh, we looking for our uh, version two application, uh, version two uh, mechanism with uh, AI system. Uh, it uh, this machine uh, will uh, tested in uh, several time uh, in uh, Kalubovil hospital. Hospital. Uh, I would uh, get this chance to uh, thank you for thank you to uh, Kalubovil medical staff and uh, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Another innovation under this category is titled an aerosol evacuation chamber for aerosol generating procedures. Invented by DADG Daminda, UCM Undugodage, BAN Danapala, and WABU Vijay Sundara. And I invite DADG Daminda to present it. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Dr. Dumungo Arachi, consultant ENT surgeon at uh, Teaching Hospital on Radhapura. Um, I thank you, uh, SLMA Organizing Committee, uh, for giving us this opportunity uh, to present our innovation. Uh, in fact, we are yet to see this type of a concept in the world uh, uh, where we operate patients using this concept. So as you know, airborne infections like uh, tuberculosis and even uh, SARS-CoV-2 can be transmitted by aerosol-generating 
procedures. And this is a list of aerosol generating procedures, and you can understand most of the ENT uh, respiratory, uh, respiratory uh, OMF and the uh, anesthetic procedures are uh, under this category, uh, and the staff is at uh, constant risk. And the preventive measures are uh, like having and uh, doing these procedures in uh, negative pressure rooms and to use fit tested and properly sealed uh, uh, particulate respirators like in 95 and FFP2 European standard mask. Uh, obviously, negative pressure rooms are not available in Sri Lanka and even fit testing facilities not available in Sri Lanka uh, and even uh, uh, proper masks are not still available in Sri Lanka. Uh, what we have is uh, uh, the uh, equivalent masks. To overcome this problem, uh, we have uh, developed uh, a, an aerosol chamber that can be used for uh, multiple surgical and medical procedures, uh, uh, and uh, which has got a vacuum exhaust uh, to uh, uh, evacuate uh, aerosols. Uh, and uh, the aerosols will be filtered by uh, HEPA filtration, a uh, standard HEPA filtration, and uh, uh, according to WHO guidelines uh, before uh, emitting. And uh, the filtered particle will be still uh, irradiated and killed. Uh, the microorganisms will be killed by additional UV radiation. So this is just the 3D view of the chamber. Uh, and uh, uh, the patient will be introduced into the chamber uh, through the uh, sliding door uh, at the bottom of the chamber. And there are multiple working ports uh, which you can use for uh, specifically designed uh, surgical procedures. Uh, that's the, the aerosol exhaust uh, which is connected to the uh, chamber with a uh, uh, flexible uh, large diameter hose. Uh, and that's the vacuum exhaust uh, in a line diagram which has the fan and then the HEPA filter uh, in the middle and the UV light uh, at the uh, proximal end with the hose. And, and it gives the specifications of the uh, elements. Uh, HEPA filter being introduced, and then uh, you see the uh, UV light, a uh, 16 watt light, which is adequate for this purpose. Uh, now, this is the principle. Now, it works uh, by not by really negative pressure, but uh, it just applies some negative pressure to uh, achieve uh, some airflow through the working working uh, ports uh, uh, while working. Uh, so that will eliminate the uh, aerosols uh, as well as the uh, contaminants uh, from outside even. Uh, we have checked the flow uh, at the outflow and uh, when it's corrected to the surface area, it comes as comes to around uh, 155 uh, cubic, for, uh, cubic feet per uh, uh, CFM uh, uh, minute, um, which is far more adequate for the purpose, uh, which is far more adequate uh, compared compared to the uh, guidelines given by CDC in, uh, for these purposes. And we have also visually uh, simulated this by the smoke uh, evacuation test where we have connected a smoke a fog machine through uh, the lung tube of a lateral airway system. Uh, and the smoke will be seen to get eliminated or evacuated uh, within a short period of time. And uh, this is the most common procedure that we do, a rejuvenated endoscopy at Teaching Hospital on Radhapura under local anesthesia. And uh, we have done a uh, large number of cases with no uh, gross, uh, any big complications. And uh, we have also used this for uh, endoscopic sinus surgeries under general anesthesia. And especially we have used even for navigation assisted surgeries where we have kept the uh, uh, emitter of the, uh, emitter of the, um, uh, navigator inside the chamber and uh, we have used powered instruments to operate uh, patients. Uh, we have tried this uh, at NHSL with, for uh, uh, flexible bronchoscopy and even uh, at our hospital for upper ear endoscopy and uh, both have been successful. Uh, this is a patient who came with uh, upper ear obstruction due to supraglottic cancer uh, where the anesthetist man managed to do manual ventilation, intubation, and even I managed to do a direct laryngoscopy and biopsy, and even the tracheostomy inside this chamber. And these are the procedures we have done during the last two months. Uh, 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 and uh, we have just assessed the complication, and we haven't seen a big complication other than one patient developing a bit of uh, claustrophobia, again, uh, in a, a bit of anxious patient. And uh, one uh, endoscopic meningoplasty has got surgical site infection. Once again, it's very difficult to attribute that to uh, uh, this chamber. So 
we have seen several shortcomings with our version two of the uh, version two. Uh, 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 that's a difficulty in sterilizing and cleaning, and then breakability of plastic during assembling and setting up. And then the fixed ports in the plastic are not very uh, ergonomic. And then uh, sometimes, I, uh, I mean, we didn't have any emergencies, but uh, it's a uh, thing that uh, difficulty in assessing, accessing the patient during an emergency. So we have uh, changed our version into version three now, where we have a, a stainless steel plastic, a stainless steel frame which can be sterilized or uh, autoclaved completely, uh, and then uh, we can remove the um, plastic uh, walls, plastic uh, surfaces, uh, and doing that uh, we managed to do microscopic ear surgeries with drilling also. Uh, but we'll be further modifying this uh, by. Uh, reviewing the plastic surfaces, and in fact, we'll be uh, uh, using sterile polythene to cover this area, and that we have found it's uh, more than adequate for the purpose. In conclusion, this concept can be used to carry out multiple surgical pr procedures and medical procedures uh, safely while preventing operating room, uh, the procedure room contamination uh, with respiratory aerosols. And a variety of surgical and medical procedures can be carried out uh, with modifying the chamber ergonomically. And thank you very much, and that's the acknowledgement. Thank you very much. Thank you. The final invention to be presented is negative pressure chamber for aerosol generating procedures and intubation procedures for COVID-19 suspected patients with two-step automatic air disinfection system invented by I. Gayan and B. Marisingha. And I invite I. Gayan to present it. Good evening. I'm Dr. Isuru, Isuru Gayan. Um, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the uh, giving us this opportunity, the new inventions committee of the SLMA. And uh, our invention is a negative pressure chamber for uh, aerosol generating procedures and intubation procedures for COVID-19 suspected patients with step two uh, automatic air dis disinfection system. Idea is by me and engineered by uh, engineer Buddhika Mahar Singh. Uh, let me tell that why we have invented this. Uh, because as frontline healthcare workers, uh, we day to day come across several patients uh, with suspected COVID patients, not confirmed. So uh, as healthcare providers, uh, we are not satisfied at some level. We are not giving the best care for this compared to the other respiratory uh, the illnesses patients. So we thought that, uh, as uh, Duminda sir correctly said, that it is uh, transmit from one to another with the droplets and aerosols. So uh, healthcare providers are high, at high risk of getting the infections uh, due to these aerosol AGP procedures when, they, when we perform on them. And the existing negative pressure rooms also do not have uh, process proper air disinfection systems. And for these solu problems, we have found solutions. One is to remove the exhaled air from the patient uh, through a negative pressure chamber and uh, disinfect the removed air before release to the environment with three step air disinfection system and a monitored system. This is the diagrammatic picture. Uh, the air uh, suction through a blower, and the uh, first step disinfection through convection heating. Then the second is radiation heating by by uh, IR radiations. Then third is UV disinfection system, and all three systems are controlled and monitored throughout with a digital electronic system. 
and this is how that we are this uh, first picture is the chamber with the duct and second one is the uh, disinfecting system and third one is the monitor system we have already uh, established this in ragama a and e and currently practice there and uh, this is how the current applications you know that as frontline uh, healthcare persons we came across a lot of patients has only the suspicion so uh, in a case of uh, in a cardiac arrest there is no place that means we can't do the proper uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. If we can get down the patient immediately to this uh, the negative pressure system, and uh, if we are properly wear the PPE with a separate team with uh, airborne precautions, and we can start the chest compression, and in the meantime, the airway person uh, can uh, manage the airway properly within the uh, chamber. And uh, we can clearly give the forehand techniques of ambu ventilation. And uh, if we come across the same kind of patient with, uh, with uh, critical ill, with uh, history of uh, asthma, in a normal patient, we are definitely nebulized with uh, oxygen-driven nebulization. But as AGP, we can't do that. So uh, it is not good fair for the patient also. And if we ask our healthcare person to uh, put them on nebulization, it is not fair for the healthcare worker also. So there, for as uh, uh, demonstrate with that, with the nebulization, uh, we can uh, the uh, particles can easily remove from the duct system. And uh, with further escalation of the res respiration therapy, in uh, as uh, uh, Anand sir said in the previous lecture, that current recent evidence shows that early high flow therapy is better than just putting the intubation and going to invasive ventilation because almost always uh, think uh, non-invasive ventilation is better than invasive ventilation. And uh, in non-invasive non -invasive ventilation also, uh, negative pressure is better than positive pressure. If you, keep, if you can keep the patient with uh, positive negative pressure, natural breathing with the minimal support is better than keeping them positive pressure with NIV. So uh, early high flow therapy, we can go with this. And for non-invasive ventilation, if the patient is deteriorating, we can uh, give the non-invasive with the, uh, this system. And unfortunately, if the patient is going to uh, if needed intubation, we can safely pre-oxygenate with the system and uh, safely uh, intubate using video laryngoscope. And if you admit the patient to the ICU or uh, the COVID-specific uh, uh, isolation unit, we can get the PCR testing uh, safely with this chamber and uh, the ICU nursing and feeding also we can uh, do it safely if we come across patient maternal patients with uh, COVID positive and who have de just delivered the baby and baby is negative and we can ask the mother safely breastfeed through this chamber and uh, we have invented this uh, from all all the materials from Sri Lanka it is roughly around 75,000 rupees from uh, Sri Lankan rupees. If we come across a commercial preparation, we can go uh, as a lesser cost also. And as you all know, that recent uh, uh, published research shows that uh, the negative pressure chambers are not good for healthcare assistance because it's uh, without a duct system or without a blowing system because it's concentrate more virus concentration. So uh, by, by being, uh, while using the same systems in Sri Lanka, we, we are having a lot of uh, negative pressure chambers without a duct system. We can improve that and we can minimize the healthcare, uh, the risk for healthcare system, right? Thank you. Thank you. To give away the award for this category, I invite Professor Saru Jayasikha, Professor of Medicine, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. I've got the results with me. Third place goes to negative pressure chamber for aerosol generating procedures and intubation procedures for COVID-19 suspected patients with two-step automatic air disinfection system.
Second place goes to an aerosol evacuation chamber for aerosol generating procedures. And the winner of this category is semi-automated mobile chest physiotherapy and prolonged cardiopulmonary resuscitation machine, which can be operated by a single person from a mobile application. Thank you, sir. And to conclude tonight's proceedings, I invite Dr. Shashika Sandarwani, the convener of the Health Innovation Research and Practice Subcommittee and council member of Sri Lanka Medical Association. Professor Manoj Veer Singh, Vice President of Sri Lanka Medical Association, Dr. Sumitra Tisera, Honorary Secretary of the SLMA, Dr. Anula Vijay Sundara, Immediate Past President of the SLMA, Professor Kumar Mendes, Chairperson of the Health Innovation Research and Practice Subcommittee, Professor Saroj Jaya Singh, Council Member of SLMA, Dr. Kalyani Guruge, Public Relations Officer of the SLMA, members of the council, members of the subcommittee, online participants, inventors, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to all of you. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today to thank you all as we conclude a milestone event of the SLMA, themed Health Innovation for Tomorrow. This award by the Sri Lanka Medical Association was initiated to recognize and appreciate the work of healthcare innovators. First, I would like to thank all the inventors who participated in this competitive competition by sending abstracts and submitting their work for review. As the judges would attest, it was a very competitive process and selection of the best was quite challengeable. My sincere gratitude to all internal and external evaluators who accept this challenge within a short period of time despite their busy schedules. Our expert team included consultant anesthetics, consultant microbiologists, consultant physicians, biomedical engineers, and mechanical engineers who were able to provide evaluation at highest ensuring quality and accountability of the process. My special thanks goes to Professor Indika Karunathilakha and the members of the organizing committee of the Congress 2020 for allocating a special time slot for this event. Professor Kumar Mendes, chairperson of the Health Innovation Research and Practice Subcommittee. Sir, you are the key pillar of this subcommittee who guided us throughout this process. Thank you very much, sir. Dr. Sajid Edra Singh, this event would not have been possible without your tremendous support and the support of your students from the Faculty of Medicine, University of Sri Jayavadanapura. Thank you for all your hard work. Dr. Duminder, Dr. Thilina, Dr. Sankar, and Dr. Pamod, the members of the subcommittee, it was a pleasure working with you as members of the team. I appreciate your support very much. Professor Saroj Jaya Singh, Professor Manoj Jira Singh, Dr. Anula Vijay Sundara, Dr. Kalyani Guruge, and Dr. Sumitra Tisera, thank you for your presence here today to deliver the awards for the winners. Our compeers, uh, Mr. Doluir and Ms. Shivangani Nivara, Navaratnam, medical students of the Faculty of Medicine, Sri Javadanapura. Thank you for the job. Well done. And my thanks goes to all the staff of the Sri Lanka Medical Association and all others who helped to make this event successful. Finally, I would like to thank you all for joining with us physically and virtually. 
dear inventors, this award ceremony is not the end. This is the beginning of your inventions. The SLMA is committed to encourage all of you by making the Innovation Award an annual event. We look forward to seeing your innovations go through, go from strength to strength in the future. Hope to see you all in next year. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you, madam. And that brings us to the end of this session. We kindly request the award winners to stay behind. Thank you and have a pleasant evening.